Excellent, thank you. All right, and so if you're not already familiar with Zoom and all of your functions, then please take a moment to get familiar with that. Um, and take a moment to introduce yourself in the chat box. So it'd be great to know who you are, where you're coming from. So share your, your name, your pronouns, what organization or town you're from and anything else you would like to share. So my name is Kara Kaikini and I use she, her, hers pronouns and I'm the board president of the Maine State Breastfeeding Coalition. And I'm glad to be here with you today. So we'll go ahead and get started. First, I'd like to acknowledge that here in Freeport, Maine, I'm standing on Wabanaki and Abenaki territories. And if you're interested in learning more about the indigenous territory you may be standing on, you can go to this website. Amanda is also going to be in charge of dropping some links into the chat box as we go along. Thank you for that. And our plan for today is to start with a year to date update. And we're going to talk about who we are. We're going to briefly go over our strategic plan that we rolled out last year and review our financial report. Uh, we'll also go over some committee reports and do a board of directors update. And then we'll wrap up at the end with any questions. And if we have time for you to go ahead and share as you would during a normal breastfeeding coalition meeting. So who are we? So the MSBC is a nonprofit that became established as a 501c3 in 2017. And we have a board of 11 incredible leaders. Our vision is that when every baby receives human milk, we'll be a healthier Maine. And our mission is that we are a welcoming and broad network of people supporting families who value human milk and breastfeeding. And together we work to enhance the culture of breastfeeding around the state through professional networking, advocacy, and education. So one way we are meeting our mission is through our bi-monthly meetings, and here we gather virtually still to learn from a topic expert at first and then learn from one another during our connecting the dots portion of the meeting. And our topics in 2021 included updates from the state of Maine WIC with Ginger Robert Scott and Samantha Blanchard. And we had a meeting, Our part of our annual meeting was including a longer community discussion about breastfeeding support, advocacy, and education in Maine. We also learned about substance use and breastfeeding and specifically about Maine's plan of safe care program with Ashley Olin. In October, we learned about Advocacy 101 with Brooke Barron. She reviewed our policymaking process and opportunities for advocacy. And in December, we learned about birth and breastfeeding with Paula Norcott. In February of this year, we had Dr. Jessica Rosenthal speak about COVID-19 and breastfeeding. And almost all of these meetings can be found on our YouTube page. We had one that we needed to edit and we were unable to do that effectively. Um, let's see here. And we also always have a board update and we spend one hour connecting the dots, which with, connecting the dots, which is a time to share what's happening legislatively around the state, what else is going on in Maine that's worth knowing about, any new research ideas that are emerging. And it also gives us the opportunity to share what challenges we might be having in our work that other participants can help with. And our presence has grown significantly in the past few years. Our meeting attendance is about 25 people, which is up from 15 um, people, each, an average of 15 in 2018. We've also grown our email listserv. We have about 360 email subscribers right now, and we use that email list to send out information like advocacy updates and new resources, as well as event and meeting updates. And social media, thanks to our gracious volunteer, Rihanna Plord, who I believe is here on the call. Uh, she has helped us grow our social media presence every day. We have 961 followers. If you're not already following us on Facebook, please do. It'd be really exciting once we get to 1,000 followers. Uh, and that has uh, doubled since 2019. It, our Instagram followers have gone from 154 um, it, three years ago to over 630 um, at this point. And our current website gets about 1,000 visits a month, and this is mostly visited by Mainers. And then next up would be folks from Massachusetts, Virginia, 
in California. And within Maine, most visitors are in the Portland area, then Bangor, Augusta, South Portland, Cape Elizabeth, Topsom, Falmouth, Ellsworth, essentially as far south as York, as far east as Machias, as far west as Bethel, and as far north as Madawaska and Fort Kent. We are so excited to share that an updated website will be rolling out in the next month or so. So it is currently being revamped as we speak by web designer Laura Fox from Maine Fox Marketing. So we're really excited to see how that looks. We'll be getting a sneak peek very soon. Oh, and I meant to delete those slides, didn't quite get those out. So next up, uh, if is Brooke here, Amanda? I I'm she not here, I made it. You are, okay, time. I couldn't see you. All right, Can excellent. You hear me so, now? Yes. Great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Brooke Barron. I'm on the board of the Maine State Breastfeeding Coalition. And I'm also, um, as of a couple months ago, the treasurer. So I'm happy to give you the financial report. Um, so here I have two columns. The one on the left, or I guess the column in the middle, is for our fiscal year, which is um, January through December. So um, we started the year with, um, let's see, we started last year with, I had it somewhere, um, but now I can't pull it up. With, okay, we started the year with about seven thousand dollars oh yeah at the bottom seven seven thousand dollars and seven hundred thirty one dollars seven thousand thirty one dollars um and added about twenty eight hundred in revenue um last year um we did have a remote to world breastfeeding week um that we received no, several sponsorships for um we were not able to have our in-person storytelling event um as we'd hoped because of covid um, so that number wasn't as high um, as we had hoped for, but we did, we were able to replace some of that revenue through World Breastfeeding Week. We also received about $1,000 in private contributions. You'll see a big change um, from last year to this year, um, the first three months of this year, is we've now um, received a substantial, um, two substantial grants. Um, one, um, actually, Kara, would you like to describe this? Grants briefly before I go on, since that's something new yes. for yes. the marketing solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we received a a grant from the Maine Women's Lobby to help with, I'll actually be speaking to this a little bit more later, to help with paid leave advocacy uh, and outreach specifically. And we also received a grant from the, or a stipend from the Maine Children's Alliance to help with recruitment of a focus group of black mothers in Maine to look at um, racial disparities in maternal child health in Maine. So altogether that's um, $9,000 that we weren't receiving last year. Um, that, that funding is subcontracted out um, to, um, I guess to members of our board who are doing that actual work outside their board service. Um, we also received $250 for the World Breastfeeding Week, um, although that was actually sort of a late payment for um, last year's World Breastfeeding Week. And um, we are currently working on a big new fundraising push, um, which will be, again, Kara, I imagine will be discussed later today. Um, so we do anticipate um, more money coming in in that revenue column. Um, we also are full steam ahead for our May 7th storytelling event this year. It'll be in person at one Longfellow Square in Portland. So um, while there will be many expenses related to that, there also will be ticket sales. We're also um, organizing a raffle. So we're hoping that that revenue will um, be bumped up further from that event. Um, looking at expenses. Um, so that first column of operating expenses, those are things like filing fees, license fees, um, paying for our Zoom account. Um, we have some money already allocated and more that will be going out the door for the website redesign that we're so excited about. Um, those are both, that's both money to upgrade our Squarespace account and also to pay for our wonderful web designer. Um, 
as la as was the case with last year, we will be having um, professional membership dues that will be going out the door and most likely con conference participation um, costs. Last year, we spent about $198 on advertising. That was both through um, boosting um, boosts on Facebook and also for an ad on Birth Roots, um, the Birth Roots Guide. And associated that our sponsorships, the $400 in sponsorships, we were a sponsor of um, Birth Roots's 100 Days of Winter. Um, we were, I think we were the social justice and community partnership sponsor. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that, um, that organizing, um, it's not really an event because it's a whole hundred days, but it's um, a whole suite of resources for parents of young children, um, supporting them get, getting through the hundred days of means winter. And then you'll see that subcontracts of grants is the 8750 at the bottom. So most of, um, almost the whole amount of the grants that we're receiving will be headed out the door as well. So, um, and Robin, I see you, you have your hand up. Um, I, I will just briefly um, finish down here. You can see, um, we have a lot more money coming in, um, a bit more, you know, as aside from the subcontracts, um, about level money going out, um, and we're really excited about, um, some more opportunities. Okay, Robin, I see that you're, you're all set. Um, more opportunities to build what we're doing. Um, we're, you know, pleased that we have this healthy bank account and want to make sure that we're spending it towards meeting our strategic, um, or the goals we've identified in the strategic plan. Um, happy to answer any questions on um, anything specific or big picture. Uh, is the MSBC a 501c3 nonprofit? Yes, it is. So if somebody gives a really big donation, you could give them a little tax deductible letter. So it'd be nice to rally some philanthropy there. Exactly. Yes, we do yeah. send out um, those, those um, tax deduction acknowledgement letters. And um, that is definitely something that could be really meaningful. You know, so far it's been a small portion of our revenue, but um, that could be something that was really meaningful moving forward. Absolutely. Thanks for bringing that up, Robin. That was the main, one of the main reasons we became a 501c3 and went through that process. Kara, was there anything else I was supposed to go over? I know I was just getting on kind of rushed. Um, is there anything else that would be helpful to hear about? I thought it was perfect. Thank you. And if anyone has any other questions, feel free to type them in the chat box. Uh, okay, Kim, I see, are you allowed to ask for donations or host fundraisers? Uh, so we, are you asking if we are as an organization or if you are, really anyone is. So we will talk more about some fundraisers later, but absolutely, if you ever feel inspired to even do a Facebook fundraiser, like a birthday fundraiser, that's really easy to do. And we would love to be the beneficiary of any of those fundraisers that you do. Uh, and any, you know, occasionally we will be, we, we do have a PayPal charity account and that was one link I was going to be sending you Amanda to put in the chat box, but I'm not sure it made it to that document. Uh, but absolutely, you can ask and, for donations and we can ask for donations. Yes, and I mean, as you can see here, we are lean and mean, our operating expenses, we try to keep really low, um, you know, all the board service is not compensated and um, this is a volunteer run nonprofit. So, you know, a hundred dollar donation is super meaningful for us and makes, a, that makes a big dent in our yearly operating expenses. So, um, that kind of donation is very, very much welcomed. And yes, Miriam, thank you for making, uh, MSBC the beneficiary of your son's first, first birthday party fundraiser. Thank you, Amanda, for putting that in there. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, we will go ahead and move on. Keep those questions coming if you have them. And uh, next up, we'll share a few general updates of what we are involved with outside of the coalition activity. 
and then um, share some exciting committee updates and board of director updates. So in May of 2021, one thing Brooke mentioned is that we do pay the United States Breastfeeding Committee and membership dues because we became members. So here we have the opportunity to network even more with other coalitions around the country and learn about nonprofit management. There's a lot to learn, a lot to understand, to learn about advocacy and to read dis receive discounts on their annual conference which is a fantastic conference. Some of you may have heard me talk about it before. Some of you may have attended before. And if you are interested in attending their virtual conference June 5th through 7th, let me know and we'll see how we could help support you with that. Uh, wearing this MSBC hat that I am wearing, I am also involved in the Perinatal Quality Collaborative for Maine, as well as the subcommittee that is focused on providing guidance regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, in that committee, we've been working on a mission, a vision, and a value statement for that work within the PQC for me. And that is with the intention that it will hold the perinatal quality improvement work throughout the state accountable to those values. I've also been involved with the Let's Go First 1000 Days Advisory Committee and the Maine Obesity Advisory Council to, educate on edu to, uh, to advocate for education about human milk feeding. Um, that they have some wonderful recommendations on that website. If you haven't been there before, it's good to know about the Maine Obesity Advisory Council. Uh, that's another organization that is looking for, uh, that is focused on sustainability right now as well. I'll also be joining as the as a collaborating partner on their advice on the advisory group for the new early childhood comprehensive systems grant. Um, some of you on this call might also be a part of that, or at least the programs that you work with. Um, and I'm excited to have recently connected with folks like Lisa Saka Basin and Genevieve Doughty at the Wabanaki Public Health Program. They're doing amazing work in general and specific to supporting lactating families as well. Um, so I look forward to working more closely with them and supporting each other's work. We also respond regularly to emails from people and parents in the community who are asking for guidance about navigating workplace support or discrimination in the workplace or community um, information. They're looking for information about breastfeeding pods or about Medicaid reimbursement. Maybe they're looking for lactation consultants in their area. So it's pretty regular um, involvement uh, around the state, which if we follow up with the need for donations and financial support, it's, it's a lot to sustain on a volunteer basis. So our strategic plan, we rolled this out a year ago, and it is uh, focused on connecting, supporting, and educating, advocating, and sustaining. And in order to achieve this plan, we set up five committees that are comprised, actually maybe six, that are comprised of over 20 volunteers. So some are board members and some are not board members, and we are so grateful to have this uh, volunteer support and just to have the involvement of those of you who are who are working with these families directly as well. So that brings us to our committee reports. And I'd like to start the committee reports with our DEI committee. And I'm not sure if Petrocor is here. Um, I will actually go ahead and start and just say that it may be obvious that we are an organization led not only by people with white privilege, but also largely by people with socioeconomic, cisgender, heterosexual, able-bodied, neurotypical, and educational privileges. So we know this, and we are also taking steps to understand this and to understand why it's important to address it and to understand the most effective ways to change this. So as Leila Saad, the author of Mean White Supremacy says about anti-racist and anti-oppression work, she says the aim of this work is truth seeking, truth seeing rather, owning it and figuring out what to do with it. She also says, you cannot dismantle what you cannot see. And you cannot challenge what you do not understand. So we all have a lot to learn about diversity, equity, inclusion, as well as anti-oppression actions. And in order to truly be effective in this work, we need to continue learning individually and as groups. And so we really want to be able to do this together uh, and uh, is Petrocor here? Okay, so 
Patricor is here. They're not able to give the report right now, which is okay. I am happy to do that. Uh, so the, the work that I just stated that we are working toward has started with the formation of this DEI committee. It has met twice since officially forming in November of 2021, and it is led by Petrocor. And we have uh, a number of other committee members who are attending regularly, Jessica Faircloth, Carrie Louch, Hannah Lord, and myself. And if anyone is interested in joining, please contact Petrocor. Their email address is there on the slide. Uh, the meetings are standing meetings now, third Friday of the month at 2 p.m. If you can attend that, would be great. So far, we've worked on a demographic survey, which I'll share more about in a moment. Uh, there has been really exciting work on an inclusivity statement, and we just need to review that a bit more before we roll that out and share that. We also have been developing a DEI resource list for the website, um, and we hope to wrap up some of this work and also come up with a, a strong action plan for the year that we can be accountable to. Uh, so that long list of resources that will be published on our soon to be upgraded website, we highly encourage you to dive deep into those and also share anything else with us that you don't see on there uh, and join us in these conversations. And as I may have mentioned, let us know if you're interested in being accountability partners with us in this work. So earlier this year, we rolled out that demographic survey to learn more about people in the MSBC community, and we're happy to share the results with you and utilize these results to inform our action steps toward improving diversity and representation. Petrocor is also attending a, a um, webinar series called We All Count, and it's really about uh, data equity. And they're learning a lot about this, and that might mean our next survey looks very different. But of course, we want to compare results as much as possible. Uh, but right now, um, with this survey, we had 62 responses, and the majority of whom were professionals or providers working with lactating families, and they're between the ages of 26 and 25, the majority. The majority identify as white, heterosexual women who use she, her, hers pronouns with bachelor's, master's, or professional degrees. Uh, the majority of their participants were born in the United States. Other responses were Canada, Iraq, and Japan. The majority only speak English, but those who speak other languages also speak Arabic, French, or Spanish. And the majority live or work in Southern Maine, as we saw similar representation on that map um, of who's utilizing our website. And we still have room for opportunity for more geographic representation. And we also asked about lived experiences and what experiences people are living with on a daily life, uh, in their daily life. So we appreciated learning about that and the majority of respondents have shared that they have experienced financial stress or poverty. Uh, and over a third have experienced chronic illness and uh, or domestic violence. Uh, and a majority responded that they do not live with a disability, though a significant portion identify as having a mental health condition. We also received helpful feedback on what is most utilized on our website and what people would like to see on our website, as well as what would make our website and meetings more accessible, like captions during Zoom meetings and the ability to add events to their personal calendars. I agree, I've attempted this, at least with Google Calendar links, to put those in our newsletters. Uh, if that works for you, let us know. If it's not working for you, let us know. We would like to make this as easy as possible for you to have our meetings on your calendars. Um, and some people mentioned wanting to join a committee. So please fill out the volunteer form. Amanda will put that in the chat box. And you, we would absolutely love to have more involvement in, in your wisdom. Um, supporting this too. So next up uh, is Amanda to give the workplace support committee. Thanks for being on top of that link, Amanda, and to being ready to give this next report. Well, lots of screens up. All right. So I am Amanda Powell, Vice President for the Maine State Breastfeeding Coalition. And our workplace support committee, you can see the committee members there. We have a meeting on the third Friday of the month from 10 to 11 a.m. Um, so again, feel free to join us with that link. 
And we are focusing on creating a workplace toolkit to support parents who are returning to work, work and who want to pump or provide breast milk. And the other focus is updating content on our website. The, our goals for 2022 are to complete the workplace toolkit, update the website, complete business recognition or an award program. So this would be for businesses that are doing really well with supporting their employees around breast and chest feeding. Um, so that's where we're at now. Oh, you had more Kara on the next. Um, on the next no, slide. It's just okay. I think it's just, yeah. Yeah, I think it was just duplicate, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Amanda. And next up is our communications committee. And Robin, are you there to give that report? Okay, I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so the communications committee meets on Thursday. Is it the third Thursday of the month? Anyhow, we meet once a month and it's um, myself, Cara, Ro Rihanna Plord and Ali Kopelman. Uh, Rihanna is involved with WIC and she does a lot of work on updating Facebook pages for and uh, Instagram and TikTok and putting out events and such. Uh, one of our uh, endeavors is to have a regular blog page on the new updated website. The value of that is that um, we can get some more information out to, through the website and people can get an idea of how, what concerns we have, how we talk, what we uh, address. But also every time you put something new on your website, the Google bots that look around and search, see that there's some new content and that keeps your website more active and top of the list. So that's one way to make the website and the presence of MSBC more uh, active. Um, so that's one of our goals and we're working on getting out information for the patchwork of parenting event and that will be that you know about for May. So I would really like to help anybody who wants to write a blog. It only has to be 300 words. You could do a little bit more if you want. They're brief, they're accurate, and they're practical positive things that we're not posting political rants. We're not, mm, we're, we're trying to be really proactive. So um, one thing I would really like to do is interview the new board members, each interview could be a blog and also um, people who are involved with the MSBC. Like, how did you get involved? Why is this important to you? Um, maybe we could get stories about women who are milk donors because that is a really big issue now. There's not a, enough milk to um, donated human milk and we'd like to inspire people about that. So I have a couple of ideas and if you have any interest, you can contact me. Um, my website is robin, R-O-B-I-N, at birthready.com. Like you're ready for birth, it's birthready.com. So that's basically what we do. We meet once a week, uh, once a month, and we work on that. And I'm going to look forward to seeing a regular blog roll once a month on the website. Any questions? Okay. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. All right. And next up is our events committee, which is currently made up of these five dedicated members listed on this slide. Events have been planned for years through the MSBC and have most recently been supported by additional volunteers like Ruth Burke, Amy Van Heeren, Jessica Rosenthal, Petra Cornel and Campbell, and Nicole Hart, who helped in particular to make last year's World Breastfeeding Week happen. That week, we hosted several webinars and gatherings and had over 60 attendees throughout the week and raised $2,100 through sponsorships. And we've already started brainstorming ideas for 2022 World Breastfeeding Week, which will include a tongue-tie discussion panel. And if you'd like to help with this planning or have any suggested panelists who you think might be interested, then let us know. Nicole Hart is taking that, um, that particular discussion panel on. Um, and we plan to have other webinars and potentially a, an actual in-person live picnic again. 
Uh, so also please share with us what you are planning on doing during, during World Breastfeeding Week and we can support you or simply help spread the word about that. The event committee has been especially busy planning the next storytelling event. Uh, some of you may have attended the one we did in 2019 and we were so excited to do it again in 2020 and obviously had to postpone that uh, for a couple of years due to COVID safety concerns. So we're really excited to host this opportunity for stories of parenthood to be shared and heard. And I also wanna recognize upfront that this group of storytellers represents those demographics I shared earlier. So folks with privilege who are not historically marginalized in general, um, we recognize the need to amplify the voices of Maine's parents who are black, indigenous, people of color, parents who are non-binary, who are adoptive parents, who live with disabilities, and live with other, in other parts of our state and more. And we are committed, as I stated earlier, to doing better in this regard. And we are calling ourselves out on not having made that uh, conscious priority with this event. So I just wanna say that, but I really also want to acknowledge the storytellers who submitted their stories. And we are excited to officially announce those brave storytellers here. So our storytellers for this event on May 7th, um, one person, her name is Ashley Forrester. She's a neonatal nurse practitioner whose story is about how terrifying parenting can be even for an expert. It speaks to the feelings evoked when you take your first trip to the emergency room with one of your children. Next up, uh, and this is in no order, but is Amy Kirsted, who will share her story of giving birth and beginning her newborn parenting journey the very day the lockdown began in Maine. She will share her experience of being a first time mother in those very early days of COVID-19 where newborn exhaustion, all things postpartum and pandemic uncertainty collide. Emily Elting will share her story about starting her parenting and birth recovery journey in the NICU just before the pandemic began. Jenna Marion will speak about how her relationship with her mother while she was alive prevented her from making life decisions that felt true to her, including the way she gave birth. And when she passed away one week before the COVID lockdown, unable to see her third grandson be born, she felt free to do things her way and at the same time felt her every step of the way. And next up is Joan Kalionis, who will share her story of losing her infant daughter, then experiencing the immediate lactation after loss and the emotions of years of IVF and surgeries and pregnancy that followed, the birth of her miracle baby and the joy of breastfeeding after such horrific heartbreak. And last but not least, we have Ari O'Neill who will recount the day her daughter was born, which involved an ambulance ride, a vacuum, a disorienting near-death experience, and a baby who had a seizure. It is sure to be a night to remember and an empowering night to listen to and honor the experiences of these incredible mothers. So we really hope you can join us, make it a night out for you and your friends and family um, and tell everyone you know about it. Next up is our advocacy committee, uh, and that is comprised of myself, Hannah Lord, Lisa Caracos, Dr. Ali Kopelman, and Anne-Marie Lindquist and Naomi Baryam from the Mother's Milk Bank Northeast. Our current focus has been on the donor milk reimbursement bill. Uh, this is LD85. You've heard about this. You've seen this in our newsletters. If you get our newsletters, if you don't, please sign up. Uh, this would require Maine's DHHS system to, re to reimburse the cost of donor breast milk for infants who are on Maine care and who have certain medical conditions. So this reimbursement would mean that there would be no cost to low-income families to access donor milk for their babies. Uh, last year, the bill did pass the House and the Senate, and it was carried over to this legislature. It is now currently up to the Appropriations Committee to decide whether or not and how much to fund the bill. So it's still not too late. They, I believe it'll be in the next couple of weeks that they'll be making this decision. And it's recommended that you either email the committee clerk directly or maybe more effectively email each individual committee member. Um, they can't hear enough from advocates like ourselves. Uh, and we're also working on paid leave, which I'll speak about in a second. Goals for the rest of this year and next year, 
uh, we are open to suggestions. What would you like to see us advocate for? Is there legislation you'd like to see us propose? I have a feeling we'll be doing something to really help with uh, reimbursement for doula support services. There's something there. Uh, and I know there are people out there and legislators who are supportive of this. So um, let us know if you want to, to be a part of that or if you have other ideas. And we plan to just further deepen our, our connections and relationships with the champion legislators around the state who we're, we're getting to know and uh, believe would be supportive of, of our recommendations. In terms of paid leave, this is another thing you have heard um, from us about, uh, mentioned that the MSBC is a member of the Paid Leave Coalition of Maine, which is a group that meets every other week and is currently focused on community engagement and business outreach as well as participating in the legislative process. And as I mentioned, we did receive some financial support from the Maine Women's Lobby that runs from December through June to work on paid leave education and outreach. So we've hosted a letter to the editor workshop, a story writing workshop. We've shared information about various action steps people can take, like signing a petition and sharing their stories. Uh, people can share their written stories or they can set up an interview. So far, I've interviewed a few people and have a couple more scheduled. And if you have, if you're interested in being interviewed or writing a story or know anyone else who is, please let me know that the power of story is, is huge. That's why we have these storytelling events and why we are collecting stories to help move legislators who might be on the fence about whether or not we really need and, and should invest in a paid leave system in Maine. The latest with this, uh, there was a commission to study paid leave that was established last November. They were supposed to complete their work with a report and a recommendation for the legislature by February. They did release a report, which I meant to grab the link for, but didn't. I will include that in future newsletters. Uh, but they needed an extension through this coming November in order to have the actuarial study completed. That would be more of the financial report to go along with it. Um, there's been much encouragement for the legislature not to wait for that, but just to go ahead and establish and fund a paid leave program now. Um, that included a rally at the State House in February. That's what that photo is of there. Uh, at this point, it seems unlikely that that will happen before the actuarial, actuarial studies released in November. So in the meantime, we're continuing to collect stories and organize around this and educate folks about the importance so that we have a super strong case going forward to pass what is proposed based on what has been well researched to be the most effective program for Maine. If you have any ideas or any uh, interest in working on this with me, please let me know. Next up is our fundraising committee report. Uh, fundraising committee is comprised right now. It was part of the events committee and now we really are our own committee, which is really the board, uh, but also Amy Van Heeren is really helping to lead this along with Miriam Markowitz. Um, Amy, are you there and able to speak to this a bit? I am. Thank Hi you. everyone. Yeah, we are very excited to be putting forth some foundation around our fundraising so that we can begin to build upon the great success we've had with certain corporate sponsors, certain individual donors, certain relationships we've had so far. What we're trying to do is make it a bit more formalized and to launch a more um, structured patron program that allows us to invite both corporate partners and individual donors and also community um, advocates to participate in supporting our longevity. And so as part of that, we've been working on creating a um, patron and partnership deck that we can share. We're putting together what a packaged corporate sponsorship looks like throughout uh, the coming year. And we plan to kick it off during the storytelling event to really get people excited about our work and use that moment um, of opportunity when we're all gathered to announce what our new patron program looks like and how folks might participate. And then together as a board, we'll be doing some outreach and some connection. And part of that is not only for us to directly go to some of the, the individuals and um, current um, company sponsors that we think could really help um, contribute, but to start to build an individual donor uh, communication cadence and a program. And so all the things we were talking about in the beginning, 
in terms of all of us hosting fundraisers and how we as a group and a community might get involved. Um, there's more to come for how we can continue to do that. And we will be excited to have everybody on board and joining us in sharing some of that messaging and, and um, making connections so that we can continue to sustain all the work we do year after year. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amy. We're so appreciative of your leadership and experience with this process. And um, we mentioned how that funding support can help us um, in terms of sustainability and having paid positions, continuing to run the coalition, upgrading our educational materials and designing and launching a workplace support program and toolkit. We can continue our legislative work to improve policy. Uh, so thank you for your support and uh, and your ears and eyes as we go forward to um, what this program, uh, partnership program will look like. And otherwise your donation of time is hugely, hugely helpful. So there is the link, I think Amanda may have already put it in there, but maybe she can drop it in again about how to volunteer. Uh, and of course I'm asking her to drop something in the link when she is up to continue with the next slides. All right. Um, hello everyone again. So first off, I wanted to say thank you to these board members that have left the board. Uh, we greatly appreciate all the effort and ideas that they put into the coalition during their time. I don't actually think they're on, I was looking, but thank you anyways, Ruth and Amy, we really appreciate everything. And then next, we are so excited to announce four new people to our board. Um, I will start with Miriam Merkowitz, has worked for over a decade in nonprofit management and program development, covering populations ranging from foster youth, single moms to Holocaust survivors. Her most recent work focused on creating pathways for young professionals to get involved in philanthropy and volunteerism. She has a master's degree in social work from San Francisco State University with a focus on community building and macro level change. She lived in the Bay Area for 15 years, but moved back to Maine in 2020 and had her first child. This made her realize how important it was to form her own supportive community. And she quickly became active within nonprofits and groups surrounding pregnancy, childbirth and postpartum support. So welcome Miriam, if you want to wave if you're on there somewhere. All right, next we have Jenna Marion. Jenna is a mom of three young boys, a certified pediatric sleep consultant and a certified lactation counselor. She is also the founder of Remini Pediatric Sleep Coaching. After leaving the corporate world as a market, marketing project manager for a nonprofit health information and technology association, she immersed herself in the new mom community and found her passion for supporting new parents. Jenna is passionate about helping parents overcome their sleep challenges in a breastfeeding friendly, respectful and compassionate way in an effort to reduce the risk of postpartum anxiety and depression. Um, Jenna overcame her own personal breastfeeding challenges and ended up breastfeeding her three boys for one plus years each. So welcome Jenna, you wanna give a wave. All right, next we have Nina Emlin. Since the birth of her first son almost 10 years ago, Nina has been passionately committed to supporting new and expecting parents as a writer, podcaster, support group facilitator, childbirth educator, doula, and CLC. That is, that's a lot. We all wear a lot of hats in this board for sure. So through serving so many families, as well as raising two very different children of her own, she has learned the value of unbiased evidence-based individualized support and would love to see every family in Maine get access to this kind of care. She also works as a project manager at Pump Spotting and in her free time enjoys reading, playing the ukulele, listening to podcasts and spending time with the people she loves. So welcome Nina. And finally, we have Dr. Rachel Criswell. Rachel is a full spectrum family medicine physician and IBCLC in central Maine. She completed medical school at Columbia University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York City and a residency at the Maine Dartmouth Family Medicine Residency in Augusta. Dr. Criswell earned a master's of science in biomedical research while conducting research with the Norwegian Human Milk Study. This was a birth cohort 
exploring the association of early life exposures in human milk and child health outcomes. She continues to pursue lactation research with a focus on environmental toxins in human milk and health associations. She's passionate about supporting breast and chest feeding families in her practice. So very impressive, everybody. I really, I'm so excited. Hi, Rachel, I'm so excited for everybody to be joining this board. A lot of new um, ideas and people. So thank you, everyone. I will put a link in the chat for um, all the board members so you can see there. All right, so next we have our 2022 meetings. So June 2nd, we have a meeting topic on osteopathic manipulation therapy and breastfeeding. Uh, and I don't think I'm gonna get Karen's last name right. Uh, Karen Mangalam, a DO, is gonna be doing that one. And then August 4th, we have World Breastfeeding Week, which has been an, a really amazing event for us the last couple of years. Um, we do a lot of virtual webinars. We're not sure what it's gonna look like this year, if we'll do more in person or keep the webinars. So we will keep you updated with all that. Um, and then in October 6th, we have a meeting topic on environmental contaminants in breast milk, chemical exposure during lactation and P PFAS in breast milk. And that's our new board member, Dr. Rachel Criswell. And then December 1st, we have infant sleep and breastfeeding with also our new board member, Jenna Marion. So very exciting topics coming up. We're always looking for new ones in the future. If you have ideas, um, please let us know. If you wanted to speak on something, we are happy to hear about all that. All right, next, Kara. So we have about, <laughs> we have about 10 minutes left. I guess first I would like to open it up if anybody has questions about the board. We just went over a lot of information. So if anybody wants to talk about that, you can ask this a question or we can also um, go over any of these questions here. So what are you excited about in the MSBC? What else is going on in Maine? Um, anything legislatively that you wanna talk about research? And it's also a really good time to talk about challenges that you have because there's a big community here that can help with any connections or things that you're coming across. So I will open the floor. I have a question. Yeah, Robin. Um, I know about the uh, donor milk reimbursement from Maine Care, but reimbursement means that that family still has to pay and then they wait to get paid back. Am I, am I correct about that? They still have that's, to put some cash out. That's a really good question, Robin. I would have to look closer at how that is structured. I don't think it's going to be set up where they would have to pay out of pocket and then get reimbursed. I see how that terminology would sound yeah. like that though. Yeah. Okay, that's how it works for insurance coverage with home visits, and right. it's still a bit of a barrier. But that'd be great if I, I, I've been waiting to hear about it for quite a while. <laughs> Thank you. Pam, I see your hand up. <laughs> Hold oh, on, you're on mute, Pam. Sorry. To answer your question, Robin, um, what we do now at Maine Medical Center is we're allowed to give 10 free bottles out without any reimbursement. And that's as far, that's the only thing I know. So I'm probably not able to contribute to the farther down the road answer, but right now they don't pay back 10 bottles. That's helpful to know. I don't know if anyone else is here from another hospital that could share how that is working in your hospital, but um, that's what's happening at Maine Medical Center. I know that we have donor milk available. I, I don't know how it's reimbursed. My guess is that um, it's rolled together as part of the um, the obstetric charge, uh, but I'm sorry, I don't have more information on that. Is, is everybody also aware of the major donor milk shortage right now? And we are not allowed to sell moms going home more than five bottles of donor milk now. Thank you for yep. sharing that, Pam. 
That's good to know. I know Robin did mention earlier the importance of, of getting the word out about it and how important it is. So if anyone is able to donate, please do so. Um, that's really good to know. Instead of just assuming it's going to be there, it's good to have these reminders that it's not always. Right. Anybody else have anything to share? Oh yeah. Dr. Um, I just wanted to share um, a few legislative um, things that are in the works regarding uh, perfluoro alkyl substances, the PFAS chemicals that are um, pretty big deal in central Maine right now. Um, the, they do pass into human milk um, and there are association, long-term associations with child health outcomes um, and health outcomes later in life. Um, so one in, in particular that I wanted to highlight for this community is um, LD 1911, um, because that uh, focuses on uh, providing medical monitoring for uh, children and adults who've been exposed to uh, PFAS. Um, so that would be children who've been exposed to high levels through lactation as well. So uh, that's LD 1911, and I believe it's um, in the Appropriations Committee right now. So that would be something to um, get in touch with your legislators about. Thank you. Hey, look, I have a question about PFAS. I'm yeah. wondering um, what other countries are doing about the contamination because plastics are so prevalent. I'm wondering if like Sweden, everything seems to be great in Sweden. So what, <laughs> what did they do? I yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, so PFAS is usually found in consumer products, um, like non-stick and oil resistant things. Um, and um, Europe has its own standards for regulating those things. So um, I, I don't know exactly what their standards are, but they do tend to be more uh, stringent than ours. Um, mm -hmm. And I believe their water level um, like their safe water level is also uh, lower than ours. Um, there's a couple large birth cohorts, um, the Norwegian mother and child birth cohort and also the Nor Norwegian human milk study, both of which are looking at PFAS in breast milk and perinatal exposure and long-term health outcomes. Um, their, their levels are a lot lower than ours, but um, hopefully that will give us more insight into uh, the long-term effects. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Pam, did you have anything else? You were. Oh gosh, no. I'm. I think I'm good. I just. I. I guess I'll just say I'm happy to be uh, able to be back. It's been a while since I've had these meetings, and um, I'm really proud of Kara and what she's doing. And uh, you know, she. You all probably know she was an amazing manager of mine for years, um, and I'm thrilled that she's pursuing this wonderful uh, role now. So yay, Kara, go Kara. Yeah, Kara's an amazing leader, amazing. <laughs> Thank you all. And we're glad that you're here, Pam. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we have a few more minutes. Anything else that someone would like to bring up or talk about? I wanted to mention too that for those of you who joined later, if you weren't able to attend the full meeting, it is being recorded and we'll be putting it up on our YouTube page. We do have a YouTube channel where we keep our meeting recordings. So um, know that you can go back there to catch that. Thanks, Amanda. And I'll put in our email address too, if you aren't familiar with that. And otherwise, thank you so much for joining at four o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, especially if you've been sitting and watching amazing conference presentations. Uh, uh, oh, thank you, Connie, for sharing that. Jenna, oh gosh, Jenna's last name is not coming to me right now, works in Arista County. She had her baby yesterday. That's really good to know, good to hear. Any other exciting announcements anyone wants to share? Let's see here. If I'm still on, I can just welcome 
Robin to May Medical Center. Yay, Robin. She's, uh, she's on our staff now and Maine Medical Center is very grateful. <laughs> awesome, thank you. And is Maine Medical Center still hiring more IBCLCs, Pam? Yes, ma'am, we have a few openings, so spread the word. I'm working on my daughter-in-law, as I mentioned to you. Mm. Um, we do have openings, we are so busy, it's, I can't even get my head around how busy we are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just don't have enough of us to go around, so. We do have openings of all sorts, shapes, sizes. <laughs> and there are other organizations represented here too. I know WIC, uh, Maine Families, uh, and others. So are there other positions out there that you would like to share with this community? If anyone is looking for a new job, please un unmute or type in the chat box or email me. And I have put job opportunities in our newsletters before as well. Thanks, Veronica. Yes. Uh, so I'll be facilitating a panel at the BEST conference tomorrow, virtually, uh, about uh, called It Takes a Village, and it will uh, feature five different support people. So a physician, a father, a grandmother who's also a CLC, uh, oh gosh, a doula, was that five people? <laughs> Who am I forgetting? Oh, and a community health outreach worker. Uh, so it'll be really great to hear their experiences as support people. So join if you can. That's 1030 to 12 tomorrow, I think. All right. Well, otherwise, I'll give you the gift of, oh, it was almost a minute. I was almost going to let you go a minute early and give you a gift of one minute. Uh, but otherwise, thank you so much for being here today and supporting the Main City Breastfeeding Coalition. We do what we do because of you and all the families that you work with. So thank you. Have a great rest of your evening and see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, Kira. Bye, Pam. Thank you.